Guys, 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 you want to know what happens when you combine media like this? I mean, regular vinyl, silver, black, rhinestone, sublimation. You get a crazy design just like this. I mean, it was rough. I must warn you, it is a long video, so it's beginner friendly. For those of you who have more experience, you can skip to whatever parts you may need. There's always something to learn, and at the end, you'll see how it came out. All right, stick around. Join me in my quest with a new software as well. I am going to be using Silhouette Studio, the business edition. So this is going to be rough. You're going to watch me stumble. There's going to be some things I'm sure you're frustrated about. Some of you that know how to use the software. But if you do, put in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. Welcome to another exciting design. Today I am in a brand new software and it is called Silhouette Design Studio. I have got the business edition which I purchased and the, you know, the Cricut uh, design space is pretty good software. It's just limited in its design capability. One for the simple fact that you cannot export anything from there as an SVG file once you create it in a Cricut design space. And if you wanted to take it out, put it in a different software or just modify it, you are stuck unless you do a screenshot or maybe there's another way I don't know about. But I do like the business edition of Silhouette because it has the rhinestone capability and I like that so I can build my own rhinestone templates from now on instead of purchasing already um, made templates. That alone was enough for me to think that this was a very valuable purchase. All right, so let's get started. When you open our Silhouette Design Studio, business edition this is what you see you have the page set up right here and it gives you your page set up and it starts with the machine cameo 4 which I don't have what I'm going to be doing is making design here adding my rhinestones and exporting as an SVG bringing it back into Cricut and cutting for my Cricut Explore 3 okay so you're gonna go you're gonna see your cutting mat here is 12 by 12 which is the um, what it defaults to your media size is custom Okay, I'm going to leave it at that, 12 by 12 media size. The first thing we're going to do is change our cutting mat. Let's change that to 24 because this is a big design we're going to be doing. So let's just go to 12 by 24. All right, once you do that, it makes, you, it makes the adjustment. And let us zoom in by holding the Option key and scrolling down. Okay, or you can zoom in right here. Let's zoom out just a little bit, scroll down. All right. All right, so we're good to go. Now the first thing is we want to type in some text. My wife and I are celebrating our five-year anniversary coming up, so we just wanted some nice t-shirts to wear together, okay? Um, so I'm going to look for something that commemorates the occasion or the event. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to go to text. And my text right here is this letter A right here, and that's my text toolbar. Once I click on that, I'm ready to go. So I click anywhere here. Okay, as you can see, I have an indicator or a cursor right here ready for me to type. So let us go ahead and type in just, just married. Okay, the next text I want to type is how long we've been married. We've been married for five years okay and I just want to put that in minutes just to be cool just to be different all right so one year is five hundred and twenty five thousand six hundred minutes okay multiplied by five and you get two million six hundred and twenty eight thousand so I'm going to type that in two million six hundred and twenty eight thousand okay I'm good to go here I want to select another text and I'm going to say minutes Okay, I'm gonna write that in all caps. Good to go there, and I'm going to type in the next, and then the final text is going to be, this right here is going to be A-G-O, ago. Okay, so it's going to say, just married 2,628,000 minutes ago. Okay, just to be different. I thought it's, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good design, depending on what we do. So this is where we start. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to highlight this just married and we want to change the color so it's visible. Let's change that to a, a gray for now. And I change it here, or you can go to your color palette, which is the third, two, three, the fourth one down right here that looks like a paint uh, palette right here. As you can see, if you hover over it, it'll tell you exactly what it is. And it's the fill panel. This is where you fill in your colors. 
So I could have easily gone here and clicked on this and I given it a gray or given it a dark gray from here. Then if you look closely, all right, let me zoom in for you. Okay, if you look closely, there is a red border around this gray text. We don't want that. So what we do is we go to the one right below our color fill panel, which is our line style. Okay, you click on that to open the line style panel. Then you click on the next tab over, right? And so you want to go to nothing. So you want to take that out. Now, the quickest way to do the same thing I just did, and I'll show you by doing the number, is I'm going to click on the number right here. Then I'm going to drop, there's a drop down menu right here. Instead of going to the color palette, this is quicker, a quicker way to go. I'm going to go ahead and pick my gray. Oops. Let's just pick the lighter gray that I use here. Okay. And then if I want to take the line style out right next to it, there's a drop down menu. That's it. You can see the stroke right here. I want no, none, no stroke. So I'm going to click on that and that turns it off. Let's go ahead and do the same for minutes and a go. Okay. I'm going to turn that into my gray. And I'm going to turn my line stroke off. Okay, now we're good to go. Now we want to make this a little more, you know, a little fancier. So I want to change this Just Married to a script font or some cursive font while these remain something bold, something big, so that you could that is um, visible to the eye on my T-shirt. Okay, so let's go ahead and select this, and right here. There is a panel here that says open the text style panel. All right. So you click on that and it'll open up the text styles. This is where you can select your different fonts. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pick on something called Golden Hills. Click on that. All right. So let us just leave that as is for now. But um, it has special glyphs. Now, if you go over to the next tab over where it says glyphs, you click on that. You know, those are the swirly lines. If you want to change your D or your, you know, your E, maybe you want to add an extra squiggly, you know, you could do that. Okay. Let's go ahead and change our T because I think there is a fancier T. So we'll go ahead and delete that T and let's scroll down here to the kind of glyphs that we have with the font. So let's go to the font that we picked and that is Golden Hills. You click on that. Now you scroll down for the different kinds of fonts that you have. We are looking for a small letter T and I want it to have an extra, extra oomph, extra swirlies. And it looks like I found the right one right here. And you see what that looks like? That looks beautiful to me. Okay. Just married. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do is I want to change that D because that lead kind of looks a little basic. Let's go down here and let's scroll. All right. Let's pick this D right here. Okay, I kind of like that extra swirly line here. All right, so we got that going. We're good to go. We don't need to do anything to that yet for now. So let's go ahead and work on our number. For our number, let's go back to our style panel, our text style, and let us pick our thick impact font. All right, so that's bold and beautiful. We're eventually going to convert that to an outline of our rhinestone. So we're good to go here. Let's move that up just a little bit. Let's go to minutes and let's also pick impact and let's go to a go and let's also pick impact. So we're ready to go. Now we need to resize this based on our dimensions of our mat. I want to make it as large as possible in terms of width, but no larger than 11.51. All right. So let's do this. Let's zoom out by clicking on the minus. Okay. Let's take this and bring it down. Take this and bring it down and take that and bring it down. Okay. Now for just married. Okay. Let's go ahead and increase that size, but we want to get exact dimensions. So what I like to do here is I like to right click. Okay. I'm going to ungroup this and then I'm going to right click again and group this. All right. That's exact dimension. So the actual dimension of this just married is 4.746 inches wide by 1.006 inches tall. So I need exact dimensions so that I can fit it to my page. Okay. So let's go ahead and scroll that up. Okay. We just want to fill that page with it. And just for visibility purposes, let's go ahead and turn that to green. So I'm going to click on my color fill panel right here, drop down, and I'm going to pick a green just for now. Okay. 
all right so let us go ahead and do that and once you group and ungroup it is no longer a font as you can see it is all grayed out you can't change it and it remains as is okay so let's go ahead and increase this uh, let's say I'm going to pick exact dimensions okay so this one is going to be 11 so you keep this let's unlock this that's the proportions we're going to unlock the proportions that way I can type in exact dimensions and it remains as is okay let's do 11.026 by 2.703 703 and hit enter okay good to go there let's bring that down just a little bit all right so now that we have our just married to where we need it to be let's move it up a little bit let's go ahead and center it by hitting the align key and center it on that page on that part of the page all right i want to go ahead and replace this dot here with two wedding bands all right but let's first of all right click and i'm going to ungroup now that this is ungrouped i want to double click on my dot here I'm going to click on it again until I see my point editing. I'm going to click on that point. And now if you let me zoom in closely so you can see. It. Once I click on my points, as you can see, it says here points editing. You can break path, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and hit my delete button, right? It's going to break that path delete button as it breaks the path and the lines it's going to delete the fill as well delete that and now I have that completely gone and I'm going to click anywhere outside here and I'm good to go so now I want to go ahead and look for so now that I have my just married now I don't have a dot above my eye I want to replace it with wedding bands some graphic that represents just married so I'm going to go and head on over to Canva okay I am in canva.com it says what will you design today it doesn't really matter I'm just looking for one of their elements so let's just go ahead and pick a custom size or let's just go here and pick on um, t-shirt all right let's do a t-shirt and just pick any one of these designs that are shown here let's click on that one customize this template and we are ready to go it's going to give us an image here all right pretty good t-shirt design but we don't want that i'm going to highlight it hit delete now i'm going to scroll to the left here where it says elements and click on it so under elements i'm going to search for rings and click on enter and now it's divided into graphics photos and videos i want graphics so i want to see all of what my options are okay i have all of these okay but for now i am going to go ahead and pick this one okay now i like that one it's simple let's see just increase that size and i'm going to go ahead and download that onto my computer by clicking on the share button on right top right hand corner clicking on my download i'm going to double it in size and then I'm going to go to transparent background. Once I'm done with that, I click on my download. It's now downloaded. I'm going to go back to my silhouette design and I'm going to go ahead and import that image. And the way to do that, it's not like Cricut where you can just upload and I'll add and add it to Canvas. This is a little different. You want to go to file and then you want to go to merge. Once you click on merge, you want to look for your element and let's go to downloads. And here it is saved as a PNG. Click on it and hit OK and it will be loaded onto your plate. Now that's large. Let's go ahead and reduce that. Reduce it some more. Matter of fact, let's see. Let's just make it an exact dimension of 1.386 in width by 1.126 in height and hit enter. Okay. Let us make sure that stroke is not there. Boom, that's gone. Now I want to take this and I want to put it right above here. Okay, see how that looks? I'm going to turn that to the actual color of this same image and it's going to be green. Now I can go ahead and group by highlighting the whole thing, right clicking and clicking on group. Once I do that, 
now I can and I'm going to go to my offset click on my offset 0 0.10 okay I'm gonna go to object and I'm going to group it to group my offset I'm gonna pick a color of gray let's pick a lighter shade let's go here and let's turn our stroke line off now I'm going to pick another offset so I'm going to highlight, I'm going to click on the offset. I'm going to click on another offset. And I'm going to reduce this to 0 0.100. I'm going to click on apply. Then I'm going to change my color fill to black. And I'm going to take my line off. All right. So that's looking like how I wanted it. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to type my dimensions. Let's go ahead and ungroup that first because it's still a text and we don't have exact dimensions. As you can see, this says 1.220, but that's at least a little, that's a little taller on the top and on the bottom than the, uh, the height of the actual number. So let's right click ungroup. Okay. And I'm going to right click again and group. So now you have exact dimensions. Okay. So now we want this width to be 11 by three. So let's go ahead and make sure our proportions are unlocked. Let's make that an 11 by three and hit enter. Okay. Much better. Now let's do the same for minutes. Okay. We want to right click on group. Right click again, group. Now we have exact dimensions of minutes and we also want that to be with our proportion key or proportions unlocked. We want to make the width 11 by three. Okay, and hit enter. We want to bring that as close as possible without necessarily touching those commas. Okay. And now we want to go ahead and click on the ago. So we want to right click on that. We want to go ungroup, right click on it again, and we want to group that. Now we have exact dimensions and we have our dimension for our ago as 6.02 by 3.522. We want to hit enter and we are good to go from there. Make sure that's centered. Okay, and the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we cut off R2. That way it is not does not impact our rhinestones. Let's go ahead and make sure that this whole thing is centered. Highlight the whole thing, your alignment key, make sure it's in the middle and it's boom, right there. Let's take this. I like to make sure they're in the middle first. Okay, now we're good to go. So we want to, let's just move this down just a tad bit. All right, so we want to chop a little bit of this two off. That way our rhinestones are not sitting on top of vinyl. They're sitting on top of the t-shirt. So what we need to do is select, um, first thing I want to do is, let me go ahead and group all of these first, just for now, so that we know that everything is in place. We want to right click and want to click on group. Okay, so now that we have our group, I'm going to click on that. First of all, let's just turn this to red. That way it's visible. Let's give it a red. So it's bright. Let's give this a black. Uh, hold on a second, make sure our stroke is not on. Okay, it's off. Let's go to minutes and give it a black. Okay, and we'll leave a go as is. So now that we have our two in here, we wanna go ahead and select our just married and we want it to give some room, okay? All right, so now we click on this image. We want to go to external offset. And let us see, a distance of 0 0.100 is applicable, is, is good enough. So we're gonna hit apply. Once we hit apply, as you can see, it's hard to see it. I'm going to make it white. Okay, let's go ahead and make that external offset white and turn off our stroke line. Now, as you can see, we still have our two and it's full, but it sits right underneath there. Let's go ahead and make that center again. 
so it sits underneath there but I want it to look just like this so I need to cut it out all right so I'm going to go ahead and select the outside um, offset of just married and I want to hold down my shift and I want to click on my number which is my second image now I'm going to go to my modify panel which is this rectangle intersecting a circle and I'm going to click on subtract all and it looks like it did nothing but if you look my two is now chopped off all right now I need to take my my offset and I don't need this white offset I just needed that to chop my two off and I'm gonna go ahead and click on delete now I can take my image and center it and I'm good to go let's move that up so you can see I'm not going to have any interference so now when I line it up with rhinestones it won't sit on top of the vinyl but it will sit on the t-shirt okay so I'm good to go right there now my minutes let's leave it as is let's work on a go I'm going to take this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to it looks flat I want to do a cutout so I'm going to go ahead to my offset panel and click on that I'm going to go to my external offset and click on that I'm going to leave it as uh, let's increase that a little bit to 0 0.1 to zero okay I'm gonna click on apply and I need to group it I'm gonna to go to object and I'm going to click on group that way my offset is grouped and I'm good to go let us turn that offset into a black I click on, on my black color fill once I do that I'm gonna take my line off because I don't want that there turn it off now as you can see this This is my offset from a go. So it's just a little larger by 0 0.120 on each side. What is going to happen here is I'm going to, because I want it to be a cutout, I'm going to cut this out, okay? So let's go ahead and line that up in the center again. I'm going to click on my gray, hold on my shift and click on my black. Now, as you can see, I have two boxes selected. I'm going to go to my modify panel, which is my intersecting circle and rectangle. I'm going to click on subtract all. And you can see from here, once I pull it apart, that this is what it's done. Okay, so now I have my cutout. Now I don't need this. I'm going to highlight that and hit delete. Now I'm not done with the go yet because it still looks not as good as I want it. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to go to my offset again. Click on my offset, external offset, and I think I'm going to reduce that to, let's go to 100. Okay, I'm gonna click on apply, and I'm going to change that color to a gray. I'm gonna take out that line, and uh, that's exactly how I want it to look. Okay, so now that I have my this, it's now time to convert it to rhinestones, but here's what I wanna do. I want to take this and I want to make a duplicate of these two images my red image and my black image all right because I'm going to sublimate I want to sublimate first on a t-shirt and then I'm going to put my rhinestones on the edges that way it's clear okay I don't want to put just rhinestones and you don't see the number I want you to be able to see that it's you know we've we've been married for two million minutes or 2.6 million minutes all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down my option key while this is highlighted I'm gonna drag that makes a duplicate and then release okay let's scroll here so we can see it okay let's keep that aside and let's take this hold down my option button or your alt key and drag instant duplicate release and release so now we have these two things uh, we keep that separate We'll eventually save them as a PNG files, which we are going to upload into Cricut Design Space and do a print then cut image, okay? The fun part, guys. So what you wanna do is you wanna highlight our number. There's a rhinestone panel right here and it looks like a soccer ball, okay? It's a circle with intrusions in it. You click on that and this is where you put your rhinestone effect. There are four different kinds. There's no rhinestones outline rhinestones right here your linear rhinestones okay or your radial 
So linear is best for filling out straight lines like the T's. Radials are for curves, all right? But in this case, we're just going to select 10S. You can select 16S, 10S, it'll tell you your size. I have 10S rhinestone, so I'm gonna go ahead and select 10S, and it's the size. size here is 10. My spacing is 0.039. I'm gonna take a look at it. If I don't like it, I'm going to change that. And it tells you, once you convert it, how many rhinestones you're gonna use for 10S. So I'm gonna click on my outline. Okay, see, that looks okay, okay. But I don't like the spacing. I want to reduce that spacing because I want more rhinestones. As you can see, it's 444 rhinestones I need for 10S. I'm going to reduce that to, let's go to 0.015 and hit enter. See, that looks more like the number. Okay. As a matter of fact, let's make that a little closer. 0.012 and hit enter. And that looks way better. All right, I'm going to move this down a bit so it's not touching, but let's go ahead and zoom out just one more. All right, so let's move this down so it's not touching. Boom, right there. Let me zoom back in, make sure it's not touching. All right, good to go. Now, let us go ahead and beautify our minutes. Let us put rhinestones on it. Let's click on it. Okay, I'm going to highlight the edge. Click on that and we will leave it at 0.12 and that is looking good. I don't have to adjust any of my rhinestones. I think I like it as is and we can call it a done deal. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and zoom out again. Now let's just make sure this fits in here. Lined up properly. Boom, lined up properly. Let's go ahead and take this. Make sure it's lined up. Boom, and it's lined up, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna group these two images that I'm going to export. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my red, hold my shift key down and click on that. And then I'm going to go to my object because I don't want them to move and I'm gonna click on group. Now I can move them as an individual unit. What I wanna do is I wanna take my image and I'm gonna click on file. And I'm going to go to save selection because I have a selection to hard drive. And I'm going to call it my five year anniversary sub image shirt sub image. Okay. Now I'm gonna save it in my downloads and I'm going to hit the drop down button right here and I'm going to save it as a PNG. I'm gonna hit okay, it's gonna ask me an option to make it transparent. I'm gonna click on yes and I'm going to hit save. So the next thing you wanna do is you want to, now that you're ready with your design, you wanna make sure that everything is a compound path, okay? So you wanna right click on this and you want to make a compound path. And this is where my issue started with this software, Silhouette Studio, is every time I tried to make an item a compound path, it would take the rhinestones away. And I do know and I am aware that usually when you make a compound path, the color disappears and you can bring it back in and take the line stroke off. But in this case, sometimes ungrouping it works and sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. I'm still not very uh, familiar with the software as well as I'd like to be. But uh, I had to do what I had to do. Um, it was just a pain. Okay, once you've converted to path, now I'm going to select everything in here. And I'm going to right click and group. So the last step was also given issues as well, because when you're done with your design, you select every single image on your design and group it. And for some reason, every single time I grouped one of the rhinestones, would move around or disappear. So I didn't know what was going on. So I kept on having to ungroup and regroup and ungroup and regroup. I don't know if it was a glitch in the system or the software. I don't know if it happens to anyone else. If this happens to anyone else, uh, put it in the comment section. Let me know what I did wrong, what you've done to correct this issue. All right, right click, make a compound path. That way it's going to come over as an SVG file in layers. Okay, so that's one layer. Okay, let's go ahead and make this. I'm going to first ungroup it. 
I'm not very, very, very savvy with this software. I don't know why you have to ungroup before you make a compound path, which does some freaky stuff. But anyway, let's make a compound path. Okay, and we are good to go here. And I believe this is already, let's, let's, let's see. Okay, let's make, make a compound path. Oh, see what it does. I don't know how to solve that. Put it in the comment section if you guys know what it's doing and why it's doing that. Let me control Z that. Let's just go ahead and group it for now. Make compound path. When you do that, sometimes the color disappears. I want to go ahead and bring it back to black. Let's do that. And let's turn our line off. Okay. All right. Now, now that we've made everything compound path, we want to highlight the whole document, all designs, right click, and I'm going to group everything. That way I have one complete image. I'm not sure why that circle is moving around when I group it. Okay, my circles keep moving around, but let's go ahead and, and do this. Okay, I guess it's it works. Let's make sure all our holes are there for our rhinestone. I don't know why I was doing that. So it looks like a glitch in the system. But anyway, I like my dimensions. It's 11.5 by 13.065. So now that we have everything grouped and selected, we are going to go to File, Save Selection, Save to Hard Drive. I'm going to call that five year anniversary shirt, final design. And it's going to go as an SVG file. And I'm going to hit OK. It's probably going to be messy when it comes over to Cricut, but as I work more with Silhouette Studio, I will figure out the kinks and I should get better. So now let's head on over to Cricut Design Space and we have a blank canvas. Let us go to Upload, Upload Image, Browse. Let us get our SVG file and click on Open. And here it is. You click on upload on the bottom right hand corner and you click it right here and you add to canvas okay but this is the one we want so let us just go back and make sure 11.5 by 13.065 okay let us change that to 11.5 and see if it adjusts automatically so 11.5 and hit enter it automatically adjusted Okay, not much of a change, but now we have everything here. Now, like I anticipated, we have a messy layer panel right here. And that's because I don't know how to make these a compound path. Some of them went and some of them didn't. All right, but it's grouped. So let's just see what we're looking at. Okay, that's comprised of my green layer, which is right here, my gray layer, and my black layer okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave as is now let's see what this is that's my ago and my ago is comprised of my black layer and my gray layer which is fine and then my minutes that's that came in correctly because i was able to make that a compound path and then my five year anniversary which is that you see it's all separate now what i can do is okay let's click on everything here let's right click combine and weld all right i know my way a little bit around a little bit more obviously a lot a bit more in Cricut Design Space than Silhouette Studio, but I still do like the capabilities that I have in Silhouette Studio, even though I don't know how to completely work with it. But, all right, so we got our weld result for that. And now what are we looking at here? Let us do this, uh, the commas. That's that and that. Let's just click, let's just click on both of them and we can go down here to combine and click on weld okay so now we want all our three welded results to, to weld to be welded together so I'm going to select this that hold on my shift key this I'm going to click on combine and I'm going to click on weld that way I have one welded result so I can turn my whole image on and off for my number 
okay that's this this is grouped what I want to do is I want to I mean I could leave as is actually all right I'm not gonna mess mess around with it some more let's just make sure that it stays in place when I want to okay we got that all right so we're good these are already grouped let's close that group up this is fine this is grouped all right all right so we're good to go now we have our template everything measures 11.5 by 13.065 and finally we are ready to send it to our Cricut Explorer to make the cut no we're not I lied we need our sublimation image now what we want to do so let's click on upload on the left hand corner upload image again click on browse and here is our PNG image we're going to click on it and hit open this is what it looks like good with that we're going to go to complex and then we click on continue this is what it's going to be cutting it's our print and cut design now we're going to hit apply and continue and it's going to show us our cut image and our print and cut image we're going to click on our print and cut image and we'll click on upload click on it right here on the tile and click on add to canvas so it's going to add that to my pre-existing design now that i have that i'm going to take this over and then I'm going to make sure that my design comes in at the right dimension. Okay, so let's go ahead to Silhouette and take a look at it. My dimensions are supposed to be 6.249 by 11. Okay, let's go to Cricut. Okay, it came in larger. So it's supposed to be, let's make this 11. And let's see if it changes. And it does. It says 6.248. Let's go ahead and change that to 6.249 just to be on the safe side. And we're good to go. And as you can see, when I drag this here, this fits perfectly in my design. Okay. So we're good to go here. So I'm going to go ahead to make it. And since this is a print then cut, we want to go ahead and mirror this. Now we want to go to our next map. And this is going to be our ago for our basic cut offset, gray offset. We're going to go ahead and mirror that because that's going to be regular vinyl. And then we, for our other offset, is I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on my rhinestones and send it to the red one. All right, so I'm going to click this on the three dots and I'm going to click on move object. I'm going to move that to my red and I'm going to click on confirm. So now I'm going to have both images on my red mat. Now, it, this mat obviously is not going to be red or this vinyl. This is going to be my magic flock. So it's my template. So I'm going to be cutting my um, rhinestone templates in it. So it doesn't matter what color I pick out. I just want both of them to be cut out from the same template or the same mat per se. Okay, so let's just move this up a little bit. That way I don't waste any flock. Here's where we did not turn our mirror on. Let's turn that on. Okay, that would have been drastic. Okay, and that is also supposed to, also supposed to be mirrored. Man, I'm losing it today, guys. All right, so we go here, and this is fine, not mirrored. Okay, we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. Okay, so print and cut. We want to go ahead and send this to print all right, so you want to go ahead and click on Send to Printer. We want to do a drop down and we want to click on our Sawgrass SG500 and we want to use System Dialog. Click on Print. Printer is SG5, last use settings, paper size is 8.5 by 14, legal size. Layout, paper handling, printer info. I want to click on the drop down right here and I want to, instead of PDF, I'm going to go to Sawgrass Print Manager. All right. Now that our print manager, our print settings popped up, we are on Sawgrass SG500, uh, polyester, high quality. We're going to go with type A, which is our legal um, transfer paper, our legal sublimation paper. Tray one is fine, and I am going to leave it as is because I've already mirrored it. So I'm going to go to my layout tab, and I'm going to preserve from designer, and it should pop up on my screen right here. And it's looking good, looking good. Okay, so 
Preserve layouts, trims white space, and it centers the job. All right, we have one job, and that's what it is, color. We're going to make sure it's on vivid, and that's good. Other, we're not doing other, because we're not printing to file material. Everything is good to go here. Now, all we have to do is make sure there's paper in it, and we click on our print button. Okay, we're going to go ahead and print two copies of that, because it's going to be one for me and one for my wife. So let's go ahead and say two copies. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on my print button. All right, so correction, instead of um, print and cut, what I did is I just printed it out and I just hand cut it. Now, if I did my, if I made my Cricut machine cut it, it would have cut every single number out of it and I would have ruined that space and I have between this and this because based on how my template is arranged, it is arranged for the space in between this and this for my rhinestones to be this amount. Okay, so if I take each and every individual number and I put it straight on my t-shirt, it might not line up correctly. It might be a little more difficult. It is doable, but it's just much easier to print it out and then hand cut it. The white edges won't show on my um, sublimation image. The only thing that will show or come through is the ink. So I'm fine with this. Okay, let's go. So in my last video where I did my rhinestone for my wife's um, t-shirt, I cut my flock and I left the back end on and I put it right there on my mat and it cut right through. Someone suggested in my comment section on that video that I take the back end off and put the flock directly on the mat without the back end. That way when I'm done, I pull it off and I can save it on my back end. I can save my back end as well. Um, it's gonna make my mat a little messier, but I'm gonna try that and see if it's better. I reduced my cut settings from uh, 315 pressure, which is what I had before and I brought it down to 312. That way it doesn't cut into the mat. All right, so I'm gonna try that, put that on, and we'll go from there and see if that's better. All right, so I got that secured on my mat and I just squeegeed it down so it's flat, no air pockets in between, and so it's good to go and it's ready to be sent. I took the back end off and here it is. And so that way you can actually save your template on your back end for a later date if you don't have any chopping mats from Dollar Tree, okay? or you can use your back end to actually remove any holes that do not cut correctly. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and send this through the Cricut Explorer 3 and see how that comes out. All right guys, so let's get this process going. We got our mat and I've cut up my template with my Cricut Explorer. All right. Okay, wow. That is a little, a little more difficult to remove, but it looks like it did a an excellent job at cutting this. I don't want to stretch the holes, so I just want to be gentle with this peel. As you can tell, it's effective to have it because the back end is sticking. It's like the back end of the flock is sticky as well as the mat, so I believe that's why it made this cut, and that's nice. Okay. Peel at an angle. Not bad, not bad, guys, right? All right. Looks like we got almost all the holes. Okay, so that's what's left on my mat. Now, of course, I gotta scrape that out. That's the only difference is that it's a messier job on the mat and lifetime, lifespan of the mat might be reduced, but I might just dedicate that to my template for, to my um, rhinestone process, but there you have it guys, it's not bad. So let's see if we can, can take off some more. We're just missing a couple of holes. Let's just put that back here, rub that in. Massage the places that you see you're missing. Okay, and now uh, let's peel again. Okay, nope, we got one. Oh, we got a few more. Okay, let's flip it. Right there. All right, I just have to manually take these. But that is looking super good, guys. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that in half two separate samples because I'm gonna have to make two shirts, one for me. And yes, I don't mind rhinestones. 
So, let's cut that so we have two separate templates. All right, looking good. All right, let's put that aside. Let's work on this number, number of minutes. My wife and I have been married. 2,628,000. And if you haven't done the math, that's five years, guys. Five years. So everything here, this is 100% clean. I don't know if you can see that. Clean, and all the holes have been cut out. That's a perfect job. I think we have our holes, and that's good. Wow, I'm so amazed, guys. That setting is perfect, and removing this is a good idea. This is my red velvet. Hot fix rhinestones. Okay, and these are my black SS10 hot fix. I'm gonna put the link in my description of all the products I use and where I got my rhinestones. Again, most of my stuff is purchased on Amazon, so not too hard to find. I'll put the link, you click on it, and you should be good to go. All right, so let's start with the red. Okay. Okay, little scoopy scoopy and just spread it right there. Scoop some more. Always put a generous amount, that way it's easier. Put that away. Get my scoopy scoop ready, and I need my painter's brush, my touch-up brush, whatever you want to call it. Okay, the weight of the brush, and I'm gonna roll this around. Okay, usually when I make shirts for my wife and I or for a trip, I usually do mine first. My shirt is the experimental shirt. And then once I perfect it, after doing my shirt, and I do my wife's shirt so I don't make any mistakes. So I'm already experienced, you know. One shirt experience. Okay, now let's do our black rhinestones for our minutes. So we need some transfer tape. We don't need a new one. We can use the old ones that we have used in the past. In the past, guys, in the past. Let's get out some of our old stuff as. And we bow it, commit, and drop. Okay, wow, that was scary. Okay, sometimes something, some of these move out of place. You just have to move it back in place and make sure it sticks to the transfer sheet. Make sure there's no unusual spacing. Keep your letters back together. And then we wanna peel that, making sure we get everything on that. Oh, and one, there's one stubborn one right there. Another stubborn one right there. All right. You have any stubborn ones, you just push down the sheet and press them against the sheet so they stick and that's pretty much it. There's two right here. One right there. There's one right there. Okay, a lot of times they're just trapped in that hole. If they, um, they want to stick, they're trapped in that hole. So loosening them up is kind of, or making them stick, kind of yanks them out of position, so to speak. And we are good to go there. So what we want to do is we want to put this right back on the sheet. Preserve it, keeping it ready. So I got everything onto the transfer tape. I got two sets. I got the minutes, the number, and I got one for my wife, one set for my wife as well. And whoever gave me that suggestion about taking out the back end and then putting it without the back end and putting it back on, or we can use the back end to store the template. Good idea. I think it was a wonderful idea. I don't remember your name, but if I do, I'll give you a shout out. Thank you so much for watching my videos and thank you so much for commenting. I always appreciate the feedback and this has helped a tremendous amount. All right. 
Rhinestone done. Time to work on weeding process of my vinyl. Let's see the percentage. It is 65% recycled polyester and 35% al godon, which is cotton. All right, so standard sublimation. You want to put parchment paper in between the front and the back, so inside of the shirt, so it doesn't have ink transfer. Uh, we want only the sublimation on the top part of the shirt and not the back, so you don't want that leakage. So you want to put parchment paper in between. You got the paper layer, sublimation paper layer. All right, you got 400 degrees. And I still want to put my Teflon sheet to protect. Good amount of pressure. Hit it one time. So I'm going to take this off and let this cool off. All right, let's, com let's continue our combined media project. I let that sit out just to cool off and here is my sublimated image. Now I reduce my temperature from 400 degrees to 320 degrees because I'm going to work with the vinyl. And what I'm going to do with the vinyl is I'm going to hit it one time just to layer. Of course you can layer vinyl, so I'm going to hit one time eight probably seven to eight seconds, just so it doesn't shrink, okay? And then line the other layer, my other offsets on top of that. And this is my last offset, the black one, so that's the first layer that's gonna go on top. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit it maybe seven, eight seconds, hit the other layer eight seconds, hit another layer eight seconds, and then when I do the uh, rhinestones, I'm going to increase my temperature to 325 degrees, and then I'll hit everything, that way my vinyl still needs to uh, have more heat. All right, I'm not going to heat. I'm not going to heat it up just for adhesion purposes, and that's what we're going to do right about now. Right, put my parchment paper. Protect my sublimated layer. And I'm just going to hit that one time. Push that in. Increase my pressure. I'm up to 320. Hit that for about. Okay, that was about eight seconds. Okay, that's a warm peel. Just peel that right off. And I love that black vinyl. It's so matted. It's got that matte black feel that I like. Nothing against glossy feels, but I just like that matte feel. And alrighty. All right, so I got my black layer. Next layer is my silver. And the silver is going to sit on top of it just like so already. Just put that over here for now. I can put it over all of them. Okay. Okay, another nine seconds. I would do seven, eight seconds, but um, usually if I've tried that before, maybe less, maybe five seconds, but uh, my vinyl doesn't really do well. I don't know if my heat press is not hot enough, but 320 is my sweet spot. Um, this is a warm peel. That design is looking kind of good. Remember when we started it? We started with this green color. And now look at it. Look at that. Uh, do that for 10 seconds, that way I hit the, it tends to heat up more towards the middle than the edges, but we'll see. Let's take that out. Okay, so just roll it off. My 
last layer. It's got to be dead center. If not, it won't look nice. I have to have a black. You know, I'm normally, I, I normally like doing black shirts for myself because, you know, black kind of hides the imperfections when you're watching your weight. But I'm starting to lose weight, y'all. So I anticipate my love handles reducing and, you know, gut going down. Changed my diet. Been working on jogging every day. Or every, as long as my knees permit. So, I'm gonna rock this shirt on the day of our cruise. And yeah, we are doing another cruise for our anniversary. She loved the last cruise, so decided to do another cruise. And this time it's going to be a transatlantic cruise. So I'm gonna make a shirt for that as well. List in all the ports that we're going to be stopping at. Just roll it off, it's the black one. Oh, that looks good against that silver color. I'm gonna leave it at 15 seconds. And let's do it, do it, do it, do it. Rhinestone time, guys. Okay, make sure it's not laying on top of that vinyl. If not, that rhinestone is not going to stay. So, I'm gonna move that down, make sure it's not on the vinyl. All right, so here's what I did. I trimmed it on the bottom. That way it could fit. I could fit both of them at the same time. Let's see if we can do that. If we can swing it, that'd be good. I don't want to hit the rhinestones twice. Um, all right, got to do this, finish it. Got to go out to dinner. So I'm going to hit both of them at the same time. So you see how that fits right there? Boom, 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 boom. You almost ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, that, this one should fit. Okay, one second. I'll do you. I'll get a different shirt. All right, it's yeah. Wifey, taking up wifey too. Brazilian dinner. Alright, here we go. Hit that one time. Let's go. A little more pressure. I'm gonna do it for the full 15 seconds. Hey guys, have you heard about, uh, you heard about the boom? Boom, 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 boom. Okay. That's what I like to call boom. Okay, so, check it out. I'll do a close up video in my other camera. All right, guys, the close-up of the shirt. Like everything else, we must come to a conclusion. It was a long process, but it was worth it. A couple of mistakes along the road, a couple of road bumps, but we learned in the process. Uh, I was in a hurry here. We're going to dinner, so I just uh, laid down the uh, rhinestone template. So it was kind of shifted. I was missing a stone displacement, but I'll fix that later. And like I said, I did finish my wife's shirt when we got back i do like hers better it's got a faded look and the reason being is that it has only 50 percent polyester so the higher the content of polyester the more vibrant your sublimation image comes out but i do like that faded look it wasn't done in a hurry things looked good and this is what it looked like with in dark light you still had that bling function the, the shine on the sheen from the silver was coming out on the ago um, I love the way the green sets off against the gray background and it's a pretty 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 decent looking shirt Don't forget to like comment and subscribe more videos coming your way